Well, I got almost through my uh, my video and my phone crashed. So I decided just to start it over. My God, it's hot in here, honey. Goodness. Um, we're heading to the sale. Now, uh, as I told everybody in the video, you're never gonna see because it just was deleted. Um, you know, we're gonna be very selective today. I think I was extremely, uh, extremely buttoned down yesterday and reserved, but it wasn't hard to be. I mean, the prices were outrageous. And I told everybody this two months ago. Go back and look at the videos. I told you two months ago, the London sale, every year, they go too high because everybody holds all their Canadian dollars thinking that, oh, I can't pay that 30% at the border. It's ridiculous. And then they end up paying 50% or 60% here. Sure, there were some horses that went okay. There was a horse I loved yesterday, an Archangel. Went for $65,000. And the only reason that sounds even remotely normal to say is because the other prices were outrageous. And, you know, people can laugh and say, no, they weren't. They, they were good. Oh, were they? Okay, that's fine. Um... I'll politely disagree. So the prices at the sale yesterday, good for the breeders, good for the sale, I suppose, but bad for anybody thinking they were gonna buy any horses that didn't have deep pockets or uh, a nice big pen for a checkbook. My God, the prices were high yesterday. Well, some of them are low, I mean, but the horses that aren't very good looking horses, people don't want. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that that was a bargain. That just means it was a bad horse. I didn't find the only horses that were close to the ones we were looking at. I had them priced right on. I I passed on Wheeling and Dealing, the Wheeling and Dealing brother to Canadian Titan. He was okay. He was worth the eighteen thousand. But I had my eyes set on. What are you up to? Oh really? I had my eyes set on uh, Belicio, Belisimo, uh, Sonio. Number 112, that's who I wanted. Now, she only brought 20, but I had her pegged at 16. And I could have went to 21, and I might have got her for 21, but remember what I always tell everybody. If this horse isn't worth more than you're about to bid, why are you bidding? Last thought that always is through my head before I, I raise my hand. And uh, I couldn't answer yes. So I walked by uh, Canadian Titan's brother, who I thought was okay. And I walked by the classic card shark, um, brother to powerful Chris, who I thought was a really, really nice individual. He was worth 18000 but I walked by them to wait for Bellissimo Sanyo, and I didn't get her. Couldn't pull the trigger. And I suspect there could be a lot of that today. We only have six or seven horses that we're looking at. A horse at the end of the sale, Vlad. I think we can get Vlad. He had a little, a couple little curbs. I'm a little curious why they're there. He's a pretty correct horse. Might have slipped or something. It's very odd. They've been there for a while. You can tell they're kind of set and cooled down, but they're there. So uh, Vlad is one that probably, a decently bred horse, probably a horse we can afford. Um, the one that kind of puts me in a bad spot as a horse I really like is Roscoe Hall. Roscoe Hall is um, Roscoe Hall is an Angus Hall, decent family, pretty good family, uh, and he doesn't he doesn't present like a normal Angus Hall. He doesn't have that just about to come unhinged look in his eyes. You know, he doesn't have that bully rude exterior. Quiet, reserved, pretty well bred. Got a beautiful video, and 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 the video we shot him, a gorgeous horse. He's just in a bad spot, right? He's right in front of everybody we're looking at. And a couple of our clients said Anthony Angus Hall hasn't thrown anything in forever. We thrown a couple of decent horses. It, uh, Enduring Strength is a nice horse. People might say, "Oh, he's not a you know he's not a great horse. He's a pretty good colt. He made thirty thousand and trotted in fifty eight as a two year old. I can think of much worse horses to have than that. That's he's got thirty grand made already. So um, I think if you look closely, the the issue with Angus Hall isn't Angus Hall per se. He's getting a little bit older and plenty of sons of Angus Hall or cousins of Angus Hall or nephews are breeding. So he's an older horse. But the biggest problem with those older horses, before you get on a, a tangent about, you know, a tangent about older horses, Better's Delight's 21. Just sold one for 270 yesterday and sold and that Tall Dark Stranger 330. Plenty of six-figure horses this year, this year uh, from Better's Delight. So this old sire thing, I'm sorry, just a play with me. When you're looking at his his output, yeah, 
but do me a favor, cross-reference that with the type of mares he gets. Just look at them. Go on a case-by-case -case basis and look at the, the talent level of the mares, and I think you'll find out that's the problem with Angus Hall right now. So we have a, for what Angus Hall is getting, I think an above average broodmare in, in the mother of uh, Roscoe Hall, we're going to find value there. And you couldn't really ask for a better looking video from an Angus Hall. He doesn't look wild in the video, but that's a good thing. Last thing you want is a wild Angus Hall. So I'm interested in Roscoe Hall. My only problem with poor old Roscoe, he's in front of everybody else. And I don't want to buy, I told everybody, two, maybe three horses at most. We had somebody send us a horse yesterday also. I won't count that one. But we have um, we have uh, one right now in the beautiful uh, War We What's Up Colt. You're going to see him this week. Uh, I knew we could get him. I was happy. We hit it right on the number we were going to pay for him. Maybe a little less. I said I could have went a little more on him. But he's a gorgeous colt and a very strong family. I'm very, very happy with War We. What's up? Yeah. Uh, I'm very, very happy with War We Was Up. Um, and if we got Roscoe Hall, fine. I am interested in Bombogenic, although he's a little smaller than the two fillies. The other filly, uh, I own a dream at the end of the sales. Beautiful filly also. So uh, there are some horses, but there's only six or seven we're looking at. And there is a decent chance. I wouldn't say 50-50, but close, that we may not buy anything today. So... No, you can't say fur. Uh, Ava, are you okay? You think we're going to leave you uh, 100 kilometers away? There's a thousand away. people here. Is there? There is no one here right now. Anyway, it's not going to happen. Ava's a little interested in staying at the farm, playing with the cats, and less about going to the horse house. I get that. I mean, it can be a little boring. It is boring. It's not boring. You're boring. Yes, it is boring. Your mom's boring. Well, they have candy there. That's not part of it. <laughs> Okay, Ollie's in it because he knows he knows the consignment of candy. <laughs> so we're about to head out to the sale. Anyway, that's the sale for the, the sale for today. I could have done this video after, but I'll do another video after if we buy another horse. But as of right now, we have war we was up. We have a horse being sent to us. I believe he's a wheeling and dealing. Um, and then we have some horses to look at. Roscoe Hall is a very interesting prospect, but he's put me in a bad spot because he's early in the sale. Had he been later in the sale, slam dunk for Roscoe, uh, but he's going to be a little bit earlier. So that's the sale. We had a decent week at the... No. Hey, hey Ollie. Ollie. Honey, let's start with the baby. They're up there. Okay, hold on. Hey, aim. Can you take the baby up before she starts crying, sweetheart? Thank you. Poor little Addie. She's been riding around in the car. Riding around in the car all morning. She's getting a little frustrated and a little tired. Anyway, we had a great day, a great week at the track. Not an okay week. We had a great week at the track. Unfortunately, uh, Globetrotting didn't make it in the final yet, I suppose. She's first also eligible. Things can always happen. Uh, but at the same time, she finished sixth the other day. But in doing so looked absolutely tremendous. Uh, I had expectations and hopes going in. I think they were fair. They were conservative hopes. They were they were hopeful, but well I guess all hopes are hopeful. But they were uh, they were conservative hopes. I would like to see her finish up with the pack, show some spark, some spunk. But I was I was I was understanding of the fact that it's the uh, honey the keys are right up by his stereo. Right up by his stereo. Um I was uh, aware of the fact that... Ollie, can you close the door, honey, please? Can you close that door? I was very much aware of the fact that um, she was in with the best fillies in North America, right? She was having a... Uh, she was going to have a tough race in with those horses. And for her to go to retention for the first time in her life, spend the night at Mohawk, go out and race the way she did visibly belonging with those fillies, especially after not racing for 30, 45 days, really before the last decent race she had, was quite a feat. And I told everybody she was tight enough. I told everybody she was fit enough. Um, but saying that and, and actually it being the case is two very different things. So um, I knew the two schoolers we had into her would be more than enough to keep her in shape. Keep her in shape. 
Um, I was very confident of that, and I think we were 100% correct in that. Um, you know, somebody said, if Bob moves over quicker, do you get up to probably? But that's racing. Bob's trying to make it into the Breeders' Crown also. Um, you know, when, when it was obvious that he wasn't getting in, I, I, I had an availability to shove him over, and I did. But man, oh man, fastest last quarter of the race, and it was cold. It was plus five when I went on the track. For those of you in the States, as I said, refusing to join the real world with metric, that is 42 degrees. 42 degrees, I believe, right? Yeah, 42 degrees when uh, when I went on the track with globe trotting. So globe trotting race, fantastic. Sixth, beat a half a length for fifth. 154 and one last quarter and 27 and four on a frigid, frigid night in uh, a frigid night in uh, Campbellville. I get you know, and I told everybody in my video, I'm going to leave the track with a giant smile on my face, regardless, right? She had a great year. She banked $152,000. She's one of the best horses in Ohio. Probably would have been head and shoulders the best head. She won the final. Come up a tiny bit sick. Got picked off in the final um, by Kiki Mora. We had a good year also. Uh, but Globetrotting was easily one of the two best horses in Ohio for two-year-old fillies. Easily in uh, 2019. Came home representing Ohio for the most part. Representing the stable. Had a lot of weight on her shoulders coming in a little bit short potentially you know a little rusty how's she gonna do goes out and trots her ass off mile 54 and one last quarter 27 and four if she makes it in the final uh i'd love to draw decent and get in the final that would be awesome wouldn't it coming off that mile i think she can trot with almost anybody yeah sister sledge look great the new york philly look great but the new york philly obviously has been beaten now so um she's face defeat Sister Sledge was beat in Lexington. They both raced their hearts out a mile in the elimination of 53-1. and one. I would feel very comfortable heading into the final with those horses. But having said that, certainly um, no regrets. I thought uh, the way I drove her was proper, especially considering uh, everything surrounding her. I think, we did, uh, I think we did a great job getting her ready. Jason did a tremendous job prepping her for the Breeders' Crown elimination like a professional. And uh, we had a great showing on the world stage. So uh, very impressed with Jason and, uh, and Globetrotting, the way they performed the other night. So, so, uh, so, so good. So uh, when it comes to, uh, when it comes to, yes, I'm on my way home. And uh, I told everybody yesterday, somebody, somebody had made reference to Swan Vita Giant in a, in a brief, short, and clever message uh, to me after. And I watched the replay when I got home. Man, oh man, what about, yes, last quarter, 26 and 4, a mile and 53 and 3. Somebody pointed out, geez, uh, it's quite the trainer change. I hate when people say stupid things. I mean, it, maybe it was meant in a in a polite way, but the horse set a world record for Jason on a half mile track. Not a season's mark, not a track record, a world record on a half mile track with Jason not too much before. So, um,. You know, it was, it was somebody on social media had said something about uh, the trainer changed Herb Miller or whatever. I just chuckled. Um, you know, that's the one thing about, about uh, for the most part, about our trainers. They've done a great job. You know, when the horses leave here, sure, people can maintain them. But it's not like we've sold horses that have broke the track record. The only horse that has really lit everything up that has left, I, I guess, would be Real Willie. He made 70000 this year and paced in 49 or winning 49. Good for him you know, in Richard Rose barn and, you know, having horses go from your barn to Richard Rose barn and do well, don't think we're in the minority when it comes to, to that. So I'm really impressed with, uh, yes, showed himself. Now the best horses might've been at the Breeders' Crown and scattered around. He did beat Swandry the Giant at the wire, didn't he, his old training partner? And he did beat a lot of other good horses. He's got like three or four stake races left. And with a horse like him that can race on a half so good, he's a flagship horse moving forward this horse can race in the open at yonkers wherever we want to race him i'm almost certain this horse can be competitive anywhere so very impressed uh, not surprised right yes has always been a horse that finds a way to get it done and just always a worker and i was so so impressed with um you know with i shouldn't say that i said i wasn't i wasn't impressed obviously i'm impressed every time yes does something good I'm not surprised he always he surprised me so much at two the way he just got better 
and better and better and better and better. Uh, you know, just the ultimate meat and potato source. I say that all the time. Somebody says, what do you mean? You know, that fourth line hockey player that's a grinder that everybody loves, right? The guy that just goes out or the, or the girl that just goes out and gives 110% every time they're on the ice, the floor, the court, whatever. They just compete past, seemingly past what you think they can do. That is yes, in, in a nutshell. So, so, so impressed with him. Another horse that impressed me the other day was Frontier Cruz. Not known for his closing prowess and closing on the end of it. Almost got up to win. Um, you know, he just didn't feel like he wanted to move in the last turn. Had I had I moved him out into the flow in front of Paul McDonnell, mathematically looking at the race, you could have said, geez, he could have won. I don't know. He's a funny horse. I moved him when he felt like he wanted out, and that was out onto Paul McDonnell's back. He closed down the lane, pace 55, I think, but but third beat of length and closing on the end of it. Sunshine and Shade bounced back huge after his uh, after his uh, race for Mario when he was sick. 54 and a piece, I believe. Last quarter and 27 and a bit. Shot through. Mario actually shoved me out with Peanut to get James through, but Peanut had all he wanted. That was a great mile for him. Uh, he would have been fifth or fourth otherwise, but I thought he raced well, uh, considering the story behind him over the last month. He went out and schooled in 59 and then paced 55 the other night. He, he's ready to go a mile again, 54 next week, uh, but really impressed with the way Peanut handled himself. Uh, a horse that was also impressive is, has, had, has lowered our expectations to such a low point where we're talking about impressive qualifiers, oh so pine. Oso Pine looked great in his qualifier. Um, uh, we moved him over to Carmen right after, and then obviously we had some issues last night. Maintenance man has had, he's got a splint that's in a bad spot, and it rubs and bugs the suspensory on his on his hind leg. All he can do is cool down, cool him down and cryo the splint. But this is right before the sale. We're going to end up missing the, the Harrisburg sale with maintenance man over a splint. And this is a, an extremely frustrating thing but this couldn't be worse timing. This horse just finds a way to annoy me all of his 2019 season. And uh, he's had moments like he did last year. Moments. Should call him moments. He's had moments again, but obviously these, these errant scratches and uh, missing of time, it's it's just a, a, a disaster heading to a sale. So we're probably going to have to yank him out of the sale, clean up that lag, uh, cryo that splint, and... Um, I guess continue racing him. I mean, he always has value. I guess what he's worth at the sale, he'd be worth on Ongate in two months. But we have to get past the big question that everybody would have. What's with all these scratches, right? Huge question. So it's uh, poor timing and, and uh, crappy, but that happened. Anyway, I, I sent Carmen Oso Pine. He qualified great. We could have left him with Jason. I had no problem with Jason. We want to focus on the two- and three-year-olds. When it comes to horses like Oso Pine that has to race in these mid-level condition races, then yeah, I don't mind moving them around a little bit. And it's not a dig on Jason. Jason had a tremendous two-year-old year with him. My issue was is that he had a horrible start to his three-year-old year with him. Then we put him on his toes and sent him up to Illinois to Angie and her boyfriend, Rob. He did well. I want to keep him on his toes. I don't want him falling back into any ruts. So we shipped him off to, to Carmen. He'll start racing next week. West, 52nd. Just got picked off the wire in a series. Great start for him. He's had his moments also. A few more than Maintenance Man. He's had a decent year. Took a mark of 55 on a half mile track. There's some value to a horse that can trot that fast on a half. Obviously, there's a lot of trainers at Yonkers looking for horses like West 52nd. So maybe we could explore a sale potential with him down the road also. That'll be up to my partners in the, the ownership group with West 52nd. White Tiger qualified great. I see he's 12 to 1, which looks like the backup class of the Open at the Meadows on Monday. Uh, Mike Wilder picked off him to drive one of Ron Burks. Tony Hall is going to drive him. We'll see how this guy races. Um, not really sure. We'll see how, how White Tiger races coming in uh, Monday at the Meadows. And then Brave World missed this week, obviously, with Jimmy Freight and those horses in the preferred you don't want brave world it's bad enough like our, our heads were, were, were you know exploded when he won the preferred 
at long odds, but to expect him to win the preferred at 20 to 1 and, and surpass any expectations we had. And then, by the way, just go meet Jimmy Freight next week if you don't mind. And Jimmy Freight was beat by Dorsodoro Hanover. These are the, the top. This isn't the preferred crew. This is an open, uh, an aged open group. And uh, I'm glad that Richard didn't enter him in there. That could have been disastrous for poor, for poor Brave World. He deserved a rest, and he got one. So, uh, so that's that's good for him, and it's good for us. Anyway, it's been a great week in racing. Uh, we got some horses on their way back that are interesting. We're going to look at some aged horses in Harrisburg. Want to fill that void? We do have some clients that want to get a top pacer, a top trotter, and we're going to try and do that also. Um, and when it comes to the horses we have. Yes, White Tiger, Globe Trotting coming back. We'll talk about all the two-year-olds. Maybe I'll do a two-year-old segment, the horses that interest me the most coming back. Top 10 two-year-olds coming back of 2020. That's an interesting video. Maybe we'll do that one. Globe Trotting, Frontier Cruise, uh, Sunshine and Shade Race Great. Little Peanut showed his, his spunk again, tightening him up for next week. Oh, so Pine Qualified Great, West 52nd Race Fantastic. White Tiger's in tomorrow. Very interested to watch that race. First start back off of Lazex. We'll see how that plays. And then, obviously, Brave World with me in next week. So, it's been a great weekend. We had a, a um, beat half a length, I guess, for making a Cinderella weekend. But uh, certainly no no shame in the race at Globetrotting. Went. I'm so excited to race this filly as a three-year-old. Just a beautiful, beautiful filly. And uh, lots of excitement surrounding her and a lot of our other horses. And just in case anybody forgot about Yes, he made them take notice on Saturday, on Friday evening. Very impressed with the week we've had. Happy with the horse we bought. War we was up in London. Heading to London right now might add to that total. But as I said, we stuck to the script. We will stick to the script. And if we get any other ones, there will be the horses that you already have videos of. So that's it. I'm getting in underway now. We're going to head down to London and see what we can find at the Agriplex, I think it's called, in London. Talk to you guys soon. Take care.